there she is. Welcome back. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm a bit nervous, actually. It's my first uh, session and my second measure camp ever, uh, but I'm really looking forward uh, to a great discussion. Um, so we started this discussion on several different occasions, actually. So it was all about self-service analytics versus some kind of non-self-service or centrally administ administered um, analytics. Um, and there's a lot of pros and cons to both um, versions of it, I guess. Um, but also, definitely also many, many different aspects uh, which are really individual for each company and organization, which might be in favor for one or the other um, solution. Um, so just to like, the, the main question is, should analytics in terms of, of reporting and data provision be self-service or more like a centralized thing? Um, just to throw in one or two uh, aspects to get the conversation going, uh, maybe. I mean, of course, one thing is always the workload. Um, analysts are limited in resources in most of the cases. There's not too many people doing it, doing it for huge organizations or maybe there's only one analytics person uh, who has to um, battle all the different tasks coming in. Um, so of course it would be easier if there's someone who wants to know, hey, what was the conversion rate of my campaign last month? If that person could just look it up uh, themselves, that would be much easier, of course. On the other hand, and I know Matthew will probably be joining as well in a few minutes. Uh, I know that his take is uh, more like, well, but if that person know, knows that the conversion rate was like 2%, what what will you do based on this? Like, wh what's the value of knowing this and, and getting to know that number? Um, so there's, there is uh, Matthew as well. Y'all joined as well, Benjamin. Um, thanks for joining in. Um, I cannot see the other attendees. I think the list is quite long with people on stage, um, but maybe you want to start. Uh, or someone wants to to give his opinion. Sure, I don't mind uh, going first. I really like the the topic. Um, and and it, um, so first off, I think like it's good to share like uh, access to analytics uh, in, in whatever form it is. Uh, but I think the difficult difficulty lies in the uh, level of knowledge knowledge that people have when accessing the data. And uh, kind of and sorry, it kind of also means that somewhere within the organization there needs to be a point of contact that they could go to i think uh, but also like like you said uh, svenja it's like also uh, they need to know how to interpret the data i think that there lies like a, a danger so to speak that people interpret like the conversion rate is it session based is it user based is it whatever based uh, i think uh, that's something you need to have like uh, a common ground on i would really love the other's uh, opinion on that Matt, you wanna you wanna go first? Cause I know we always have like like very strong opposite opinions on that topic. <laughs> yeah, I was just finishing my delicious little um, gummies. Um, so I think it's really I would probably revise my opinion a little bit of what I said earlier, y'all, in our discussion. So essentially, my opinion is that if somebody says What's the conversion rate for my campaign last month, last week, whatever? My answer is 2%, now what? And they often don't know what they're going to do with that number. So giving them access to look up that number themselves doesn't bring any concrete business value. I think most people agree with that point. Where I think our point of opinion diverges is that I don't think it should go in the direction of giving people access to that data in the first place because even if you get them to the point where they are able to look up those things, I don't think it helps them mature. And the reason I don't think it helps them mature is because we are expecting people outside the data space to pick up things that they are not skilled for. We are basically asking a marketing manager, a product owner, an HR person, someone in finance to upskill to the level of something that we do full-time, understanding how data is collected, 
why a data layer value is different on one page from another, why something is collected in the app and not in the shop. Like there are so many intricacies and yet we have this expectation that outside data, people should pick up on this somehow through self-service in some way. And I feel that that expectation is unrealistic. And the reason I feel that expectation is unrealistic is because we don't do it in any other part of the business. If you look at product, no product manager writes front-end code. They give requirements to the tech teams. The tech teams check those requirements. They ask questions saying, how do you want this feature to behave? And then the feature gets implemented by the tech teams, by developers, front-end and back-end. HR, when they get candidates, when they do job descriptions, they go to the line manager. The line manager writes the job ad and the HR reviews it, but they ask good questions like, What's the salary range supposed to be? They know what questions to ask. And yet in data, we're expecting other people outside of data to suddenly pick up on those hundreds of different things that we all pick up on. I feel that expectation is unrealistic. That being said, and I will close in 10 seconds, I feel there's a difference between companies who operate in model A or model B. Model A is centralized team, no analysts embedded whatsoever, all teams left to fend for themselves, uh, where everybody goes to that central team with requests. I feel in that model that some form of enablement is necessary because otherwise they are stuck forever. From, purely from a resource perspective, they are stuck. Model B is companies where there is maybe a centralized team, but there are some embedded analysts within teams who have Primarily, they are there as a data person, but they are upskilled for product or marketing or et cetera. Those people can be enablers. And there I feel very strongly that giving actual end user access to Adobe Analytics is maybe not that useful because we don't want people actually necessarily going and looking up a conversion rate themselves at that point. It maybe should be the analyst. Yeah, to fire back and say, why do you want to know that? And ask five times why. And maybe at the fifth why, they actually come up with the reason about why they need that conversion rate. So sorry if that's polarizing. Can I ask one question about that, Matthew? Of course. Because would you hire a marketing manager who is supposed to do digital marketing campaigns and doesn't know what the conversion rate is and doesn't and cannot define what conversion rate means for their campaigns. Because I think that that's similar to having a product manager who doesn't know what kind of product features they really want to implement. Mm -hmm. So I would hire, if I had to hire a marketing manager, I would hire someone who in an interview process, when I ask them, how are you going to measure the success of your campaigns, says something like, I'm interested to know if this campaign brings in high revenue customers in an e-commerce setting, let's say, high revenue generating customers or low revenue generating customers. And for that, I need to look at that customer's previous buying history, for example. I want them to understand that what they're doing plays into the business as a whole. If I'm like sitting in front of someone as a marketing manager and they tell me, yeah, I need to understand the success of my campaign and to do that, I will look at the, the click-through rate on the campaign. Like they haven't understood that that thing plays exactly. into a larger picture of something. But then... But what marketing analyst, but mm -hmm. what marketing analyst is going to be able to sit down and do CLV analysis on their campaign. It's just not realistic. No matter what tool you put in front of them, it's not going to happen, in my opinion. It's too complex for them. Matthew, I think this is this is exactly the, the point where the biggest misunderstanding in terms of self-service is. Self-service does not mean you need to do everything that an analyst does, but it's like getting rid of tasks that you don't need an analyst for, so the analyst has time to do <laughs> Um, value creation with an actual analysis instead of like dumping data on people. And I think this yeah. is like the biggest misunderstanding um, just followed by 
well, self-service runs on its own. It's like you, you're just like dumping it out there and the things magically happen. And like, uh, so we're really big on self-service in, in our company. And I can tell you, um, that's not the way that works. It's, it's a lot of work to make that happen. Um, but if you make it work and if the company culture is in, in that specific way, and unfortunately it is with us, um, then it, it's doing a really great job. Like uh, our CDO expects everyone to know the numbers. Like if you're responsible for part of the job, you need to know the numbers because she will know the numbers and she's gonna ask you. And uh, she, she's really incredible on numbers. I've rarely seen that kind of, uh, of trait, but it's like, you can give her this whole big Excel sheet and she'd go in and then say, hey, the number um, in, in G20, uh, that must be wrong. That, that, that cannot be right. And usually she is right when, when she points that out. And that's her expectation on everyone to know the numbers of like what they are doing. Um, but it does not mean that you have to go in and do customer lifetime value. Um, on your own, because that's definitely something where you need an analyst, but that's also not something that most people need to know on a daily basis, because you're not going to change things on a daily basis, like when you're looking at customer lifetime value, that's more of a long-term strategic thing. And I think this is where we need to need to distinguish um, like the cases. Like, I don't want to have an analyst um, tell a marketer uh, how many clicks his partner banner had so if you want if you need to know how many clicks your banner have for whatever reason um you need to be able to handle that on your own because this also means like if we enable people to to work or to answer their regular recurring data questions um like up to 70 or 80 percent that also means growth for the company and a growth that we cannot like keep up with like embedded analysts just for the simple reason that you would never get enough headcounts to, to cover uh, and, and have the same growth. Um, and even if you would get the headcounts in the company, there's like the, the job market does not like provide that kind of um, force out there. So uh, it's, a, it's a really great way to help with the, with the growth. And then the analysts can come in and do this borrowing and like discuss um, actually what, what you are looking at, is this the correct number you're looking at? And we actually, we see an evolution in those kind of questions where they usually start out with, hey, can you give me this or that number? And then like once in a while they'd come back or we would ask them, hey, what is your actual business question? Because we don't like, we don't feel that the number you're just requesting will answer what you need to answer. So let us help you um, with that. And now a lot of people are back to like using our service channels and they would come up, say, hey, this is my business question. This is what I looked at. What is your opinion on that? D did I do it correctly? Is there a different way to do that? What would you suggest? And then we always have the chance to like go in and say, hey, this is something you need an analyst for. So it's kind of, and I'm, I'm, I'm stopping my rant now. <laughs> it's kind of like different layers where, like self service makes sense, and then you come to a layer where it does not make sense anymore. So it's like a definition question as well about what what that actually means. And actually, at the moment uh, where I work, there's a project underway to kind of revamp our entire education around that. And our team lead was calling it self service, and I said, "Stop calling it self service. Just call it service." because not everything has to do with someone getting it themselves. It's about finding that balance between the both sides. But if I were to ask, let's say, if I put this in a stupid way, if I hire two people in a team to be basically very good SQL monkeys, that's their job, is to be there to execute SQL, to look up people's questions. They would at least have the chance to ask that person every time why they're looking up the number of banner impressions. The risk I see in an organization, I agree with you that people need to have access to data to be able to see that number. There are reasons that they need to have that number. But the risk is that they blindly walk through that tunnel day in, day out, looking up the number of banner impressions and never ask themselves why. And because they have access to it, they're never confronted about that. And some manager who's not in the data team, who doesn't embody the culture that, the, that we data people maybe have or the rest of the company might have, doesn't challenge that person on thinking about why they're, asking, why they're getting impression numbers for them. 
the manager is just, just telling them, hey, get me the banner impression numbers for every day and send them to me by email. And they continue doing that for months and months and months and months. And that's not bringing any value to the business. And I would much rather have that person have to go through a person and not a system where someone like Svenja would say, why do you need that number? Oh, my manager asked for it. Yeah, but why did your manager ask for it? And maybe it takes five whys to get to the answer, but then it kind of brings us further, moves the needle in some way. So I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a global answer. That, that. That, that would like kind of taking it to an extreme, that would like mean you're the master of what should get answered and what not. And you would decide this for the entire business. And I think, and I know this is the, the extreme version. Um, I think that's a very dangerous path for a company and for, for an analyst because well, uh, I, I don't have the like the entire picture on a company and it might also depend on like how big the company is, but it's like um, it would bring me down to like deciding whose question is valuable and whose is not. And yes, we have to do this on a daily basis anyways for the, for those things that we need to tackle ourselves. We need to like, when you, when you come up with the tagging plan, we need to decide what we're going to tackle first. But doing this for an entire company, for every single question that, that's getting asked, it's kind of like limiting uh, the colleagues. And um, yes, absolutely. There will be mistakes out there. There will be wrong decisions, but you cannot be the babysitter for the entire company. I'm sorry for that, those drastic mm. words. It's like, it's, no, I agree. you know, I can, I can no, tell you no, that like, when like the, um, if you have the heater on and you, and you put your hand on, then it's likely going to be hot. And I can tell you that a couple of times. Um, but if you're a grown up person and you do that anyways, it's like, yeah, I cannot be responsible for that. I'm sorry. It's, and I think that that's something I, that we kind of like have to distance ourselves from. It's like we, we cannot like in any ways be responsible for every single data dr driven decision that is made in the company because that will mean the company is no longer data driven. And so can I, so a couple of things, I think, uh, Matthew, what you said, like, uh, you know, like you cannot answer every Question. That's what you said. Um, I think you could add like a layer, a uh, layer, right, where you can say, well, you need to take an exam or some form of test where you can say, well, you could move on to the next level of access. Yeah, so then you move from a certain level self service to to like a next level self service. I think that's a possible solution. And my other point was, uh, I forgot. <laughs> I wanted to make another point on what Jal was saying. Uh, but I do really agree with your, what you're saying, uh, Joe. I think uh, it really depends on on the on what you define as self service, and I think that's also the point you were making, Matthew. Is like, what's the definition of self service? Yeah, and I think also, also, I think I'm it. Sorry. Yeah, no, Svenja, go ahead. I was just thinking about the assumption that the people don't know what they are looking for, which is of course true in many cases. Uh, it's just kind of a fact and we all experience this but on the other hand if there is someone who asks you for banner impressions every second week or something i mean of course it's it's an absolute number um but on the other hand if that it's the same person asking every two weeks um i mean i think the person can kind of assess if this is increasing or decreasing and maybe this is something that is telling the person hey is it's working well or not of course there's a million other factors which should be factored in as well um but and also this is a super simplified example. Um, but this goes back to, to Yal's point of, we cannot babysit everyone. Like there's 700 people and all people, like everyone has a question and we cannot look at every single question. Um, so it would be quite difficult. And what do you do with the people where you didn't have the chance to talk to them like in the last three months because you didn't have time because you were talking to the other 650 people people in the organization. So they have to wait two years until um, one of the analysts has time to kind of talk to them and, and, and check if they are asking the right questions or not. So what, yeah, I mean, what do uh, you do with the rest of them? Or how, how would you tackle it in general? Um, if they're in your um, perfect world, I assume there would be no self-service. No. So, what, what, what um, so self-service, I think. 
So yeah, I'm playing obviously devil's advocate here because I think it's very good to get kind of both sides of the picture. Um, my kind of true perfect world view would be that there are kind of different levels um, that are to some extent tied to data access for sure. Like um, maybe someone does know how to program SQL, but they don't understand data well enough to have access to the database to be able to run queries themselves, right? Like, because if they don't have that inherent understanding of the business, maybe it needs to come with some time, like they're new in the organization, for example. Like, you know, the thing that a lot of businesses do is like someone comes in and they just give them logins to everything. And then that person like spends two weeks just exploring everything. And that's maybe not so useful sometimes. Um, so I think in the ideal scenario, um, basically the entire service concept consists of a balance between what I call kind of self and assisted service, um, where some stakeholders have gone through either quizzes or kind of one-on-ones or some form of guidance, which of course, depending on the size of the company will probably change as well. Like in a very large company, it could be on LinkedIn uh, learning where you have like some interactive quizzes that they need to answer to get kind of more power in a way so that they don't mess with something that they don't understand, like creating their own dimensions and metrics report or something like that. But it, at a basic level, I think it exists that there will be recurring questions. There will be things that people want to monitor and those things will be available on a generic level to the entire company in the form of different data products, whether it's a dashboard, whether it's an export, whether it's an interactive cool thing, whether it's Monday morning SMSs, it doesn't matter. I think that's what it comes down to is like, how do we fulfill that need for those stakeholders? And I agree that we cannot answer everyone's question, but I also feel like questions do need to be filtered in some way. And I don't know what the perfect solution is for that yet. I've been thinking about this for probably eight or nine months, and I don't have an answer to that. I do think that there needs to be a filtering mechanism. Most people just say, make a JIRA ticket, and there's a template there. And that kind of stops a lot of people from asking their question in the first place because the hurdle's too high. But if it's too low, then you get all the questions, like how many impressions did my banner have last week? Um, and like a one time, I'm not saying that's a bad question. I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily move the needle as much as other things. So I think in an ideal scenario, I would have, because we talked about ha having this sort of centralization versus uh, embedded, um, I would like to have actually everyone centralized for the simple reason that cross-pollination, if I 